All right. Well, good evening, everybody. And we'd like to welcome you to our official public hearing um, concerning our annual transportation plan requests for FY23. Next slide. Um, this is a public information meeting. Uh, of course, at the end of the meeting, we will take public comments. Uh, this, this session is being recorded. Please sign in by typing your name, first and last, and city, your town, or community in the chat box. During the presentation, you may type questions, comments into the chat box. Please type your name, first and last, city and town, and reference the slide number if applicable. Comments must be relevant to today's presentation and pertain to the topic. The public comment portion is at the end of the presentation. There will be no responses to your comments today. However, questions, comments will be categorized and responses will be posted on our website, hartfordtransitlink.org, no later by February 24th, 2022. And again, we will again, um, I will again repeat this information uh, prior to opening the official uh, public comment portion. Next slide. Um, where we advertised for the public hearing, of course, we did the Aegis in January 26th and 28th and February 2nd and 4th. Along with that, we did postings through the Office of Community and Government Relations, Hartford Transit Link on our buses, our website, and our calendar, Hartford Transit Link CTY system, where that distributes information out to those that sign up for uh, Hartford Transit alerts on February 14th and 16th. Economic Development, Economic Development Facebook postings, Hartford Commute Smart Facebook postings, and of course in our bus shelters, and also on our new electronic displays at the Aberdeen and Edgewood Transfer Centers. Um, below, uh, next is a little overview of our department. Of course, we have Len Parrish, who is the director of our department. We have Karen Holt, the deputy director, and then I am Gary Blazinski, the administrator of Hartford Transit, and along with me tonight are Jody Glock, who is our administrative supervisor, Ken Weldon, our transit supervisor, um, and then Alan Doran, who is our ride share coordinator. He is, everyone is with us on the call. Next slide. Um, currently our operations, we operate out of a 14,000 square foot facility um, on 2. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.75 acres of land. We have a two bay uh, bus maintenance shop and a bus wash, and we have fixed 56 employees. We currently operate seven fixed routes daily with 12 buses in each AM and PM shift, and we operate Monday through Friday on our fixed route service from 5 AM to 9 PM. We service Aberdeen, Abingdon, Bel Air, Bell Camp, Churchville, Edgewood, Habit of Grace, Joppa Town, Riverside, Perryman, and Perryville. Next slide. Um, Next slide is a list of our seven routes that we do operate. I won't go into a lot of detail here, um, but please note that every route is color coded. Uh, the description here is just a brief description of what each particular route services. Um, but if you go onto our website, um, and we'll show that a little bit later, our website is set up as a, it's called Flipbooks, which is actually like a catalog. Uh, you click on the route number, it actually flips the pages to get you where you wanna go, um, and it will give you all the necessary information on detail, including the schedule, ride guidelines, and everything else you may need to know. Next slide. Um, our, we also have our demand response or ADA paratransit service. Uh, this is service for pre-approved clients over 60 or persons with disability under 60. It's a curb to curb origin to destination service, Examples of this service include transportation from home to senior centers, medical appointments, shopping, employment, and multiple other things that people may request. Uh, every day on Monday through Friday, we operate 10 to 15 demand response, excuse me, demand response buses for seniors and persons with disabilities. Our ADA complimentary service is Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Our demand response service is Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 1 up to 3.30 p.m., I'm sorry. And again, riders must be pre-registered and uh, trips must be scheduled seven to 10 days in advance. Forms will be available at www.hartfordtransitlink.org. Or if you call us, we will send you one. Go ahead, Alan. Um, for the fares, we have our reduced fares. This is to assist seniors 
or persons with disabilities riding our fixed route system or qualified persons may receive reduced fare cards. This helps our riders control transportation costs on a fixed budget. We also have bus voucher tickets, and that is where someone can call into our operation and buy uh, group packs of tickets. And that way um, they can pay in advance. We will distribute the tickets when we pick them up. And then all they would need to do is give the tickets when they get on the bus versus cash. Uh, we also utilize one of our new technologies, Token Transit. And this is actually where you pay for your bus fare uh, with your phone. Um, the first purchase you would make on Token Transit is a 50%, anything you buy will be 50% discounted. Um, it can be utilized for both fixed route and demand response services. Purchases are on your smartphone or smart device. In addition to daily uh, passes, we have uh, daily all day, we have weekly every day, and we have monthly passes that give you unlimited rides and no transfers. Token Transit allows the rider the convenience and added safety of a cash-free and touch-free boarding process. Along with that, those tickets also do not have any type of expiration date, and they actually, once you load it on your phone, uh, the tickets are unlimited usage and do not expire. Next slide. The growth before the pandemic, I think Hartford Transit was going through quite a magnificent trend. Uh, if you look at the information here for passenger trips, uh, back in FY18, uh, we had just under 334,000 passengers on our fleet of buses. In 2019, we had 365,000 passengers on our buses. And for 29, or I'm sorry, FY20, we actually, it, that is the year we uh, redid our entire fixed route service. And we grew our service by about 80,000 passengers. And we actually uh, were close to 445,000 passengers uh, for that particular year prior to the pandemic. Of course, the next slide is you can see the miles that we operate in the county. And it is a surprise to most people that we actually operate our buses approximately 1.3 million miles um, it, within Harford County. And then again, along there are the hours of service that we provide. So 2018 to 2019, our passenger trips went up 9%. And again, 2019 to 2020, when we made our major fixed route overhaul uh, and streamlined our system, uh, we were one of the few transit agencies in the country that was seeing a 20 to 22 percent year-over-year increase in ridership, which is quite quite commendable for our organization. Next slide. Um, of course, then the pandemic hit, and as we all know, that created a lot of uh, uncertainty and whatever. And of course, you know, through the um, the the decision of the governor, we uh, had to cease service for a while, um, but our passenger count went from about 400 plus thousand to down to 113,000 for 2021. And uh, this year we annualized, looking at what we uh, are currently doing and we annualized it out for the rest of the year. Uh, we believe we're gonna hit around 250,000 passengers this year. Um, and then we're gonna do about one, just under 1.1 1 .1, uh, million miles. Um, you know, that is something that we continue to work towards uh, to rebuild our ridership. Uh, that's why we have um, utilized some of these more modern technologies and we continue to work every day at quality customer service to rebuild that ridership back to pre-pandemic levels. Our numbers here are really not much different than the, any transit organization across the country. Everyone at the height of the pandemic saw between a 70 and 80 to 90 percent drop in ridership and most agencies now are anywhere between like 50 percent or maybe 60 to 65 uh, have returned to service you know priors next slide um, bus route improvements i talked about you know one of the good things that occurred when we did make our change um, we reduced the wait time in between buses from 1.5 hours to one hour on five of the seven routes. That's basically a 33% improvement across 72% of our routes. We convert converted all of our flag stops to standard bus stops. And that way everything is scheduled um, because prior to doing that, our buses were always running late. And part of that was we were stopping all over the county in between our regular bus stops to pick up people. So that has really streamlined our, our operations 
and our buses are running about 25% more on time than they were prior to our change. And then of course, we made transferring from vehicle, uh, from bus to bus much easier. As an example, at our major uh, transfer hub, which is at the Aberdeen Metro train station, uh, there we have as many as five buses that arrive there every hour, where people really get off one bus and get on the next bus to get to the final leg of their des uh, destination. Uh, off to the right there is our bus transfer posting, and that is located also on our website and is available on our buses. And that tells you exactly about transferring, what the transfer points are, or anything you need to know uh, about that transfer scenario. Along with that, everything we post on here, if you see where token transit is listed, uh, we have Q codes, not only on all of our documents, but we have it posted in the buses that with your smartphone, uh, you hit the Q code and scan it, and it will actually automatically load token transit onto your phone. That is not only in our printed material, but also on our new electronic signs when the token transit piece comes up. That Q code also comes up and you can scan it right on the screen with your phone and that also will load your application. Alan, next slide. Here is an example of our routes and how we refined everything. Of course, everything is color coded. Each route on the back has a linear map. It has all the writing instructions that you may need or any information. On the opposite side, it has our complete schedule from when the first bus starts out until it ends throughout the day. And on five of those seven routes, the interesting thing is whatever stop you look at, if you look across the schedule, every hour that bus will return to that particular stop, which has really, really improved our service. Next slide. Again, another improvement we made, um, we increased not only our fixed route time by three hours a day, we also increased that ADA part of our demand response services by three hours a day. And our ADA service complements our fixed bus rider, our, our fixed bus time frame. Excuse me. Next slide. This is a picture of our um, Hartford Transit Link website. And again, on there, all the information you need um, from our schedules to our ride guide to the application for the demand response uh, qualifications or to qualify. Um, and Again, I'll talk about the flip books where you see all of the routes listed. You just click on one of them icons and the uh, book will actually flip open like a catalog and take you exactly where you wanna go. You can print from there, you can expand it, and it will basically do everything you need. But all the information that anyone would wanna know about Hartford Transit is on our website and it's clearly marked and very, very easy to get to. Again, um, one of our big milestones over the last year or so is our uh, partnership with the community services. We were able to get a community uh, development block grant for approximately 635,000. And that really was a huge step in a positive direction for adding bus shelters to our fixed route bus service within the county. If you see on that map along the Route 40 corridor uh, is where the saturation of the bus stops are planned. Uh, a few of these are completed. All of these uh, locations have been selected by passenger count. And then if they qualify to, uh, for the CDBG funding grant qualification. So we were able to build a few of the bus locations, bus stop locations um, and shelters. Uh, we certainly have a long way to go. Um, and we are, have, or are and have requested additional funding to make that happen. Uh, we basically, um, completed and added on to the Aberdeen uh, bus shelter. Uh, we just completed the new shelter in Edgewood at Harbor Freight. There's one at the Target in between the Target and Walmart um, in Abingdon. And then, as I said, we have our list to continue. Uh, this process, as I did mention, is not very easy to do. Uh, currently, the remainder of the shelters uh, will include um, working with property owners. Um, because a lot of these will have to go where not only they are right off the right away for that particular area, and then we'll have to have discussions and agreements with the property owner uh, to make sure we can get that to happen. Uh, we certainly will work at it, but this is our plan for the next 24 to 36 months to try and get these 16 accomplished. We, we are way ahead of the game because all 16 of these locations 
had the engineering completed. It has really the construction layout, all the plans that are needed to move forward. Um, and it always comes down to a funding issue um, to make this whole thing move forward. And then again, we're going to have to work to develop partnerships with a lot of private ownership of property to, to make this happen. Next slide. Um, along with that grant, we were also in our two biggest transfer locations, again, at the Aberdeen train station and at Edgewood by Harbor Freight, where we had these electronic signs posted at the bus shelter. If you look to the right, all of those are sort of rider tips that flash up. All the way to the upper right is how the bus schedule shows up. So in that particular location, it shows all the buses that will be arriving with the next uh, two times for each route. And uh, that is updated on real time from wherever our buses are and the length of time it will get there. And if there is a delay or something, the, uh, the times change automatically. Next slide. Um, some other milestones. Again, we talked about the bus shelters that are installed. Uh, we also do service the new park and ride at 24 and 924, which especially since uh, 152 has closed, um, has um, created a lot more activity in that particular area. The slide in the middle there is the Aberdeen train station. Uh, the one on the lower left is the shelter uh, in Bel Air. And then the other one on the right, of course, is the newest shelter that we just completed at Edgewood at Harbor Freight. Again, our token transit app is something that uh, we take a lot of pride in and has been uh, quite useful for our clients. Uh, the user or the amount of funding that goes through there uh, from when we first started has um, probably increased tenfold, um, but it is very good for our clients to have ease of buying tickets. We are working with a partnership with Hartford Community College uh, for their student passes, and we're working with them. Uh, and then we plan to continue to work with other organizations, uh, whether it's businesses or whatever, to try and help them get started or help the people that ride our transit vehicles to make it easier for them to buy passes again as an all-day pass, a five-day, and a monthly pass. Again, unlimited rides daily on each of those tickets and no transfers are needed. The wonderful thing we hear about that is people that do use our service, when they buy the all-day or the weekly pass, they have the ability to go to work, come home, and then they have the ability to get their family or do whatever and get back on the bus, and at least their ticket is all included with that one day price. So for them, it's, it's very convenient. It's very much cost savings. Um, and we get a lot, a lot of positive comments about that. Next slide. And then Route, Route Shout 2.0, uh, that again is an app. And of course, all you gotta do is uh, scan that Q code, no matter where you see it. And it is located on all our buses, on all our uh, brochures, and again, at all of our bus shelters. Um, and it's actually uh, every bus stop we have. Um, if you go to one of our bus stops, you'll see our bus stop sign. And below there is a little yellow banner about three inches wide and 12 inches long. And that has the same Q codes for everything. The great thing about Route Shout 2.0 is you can scan it. You can hit locate me. It will locate you. It will actually show you where the next shelter or the next bus stop is located. It will give you the directions to get there and show you at that particular location, the next two buses that will arrive. It's very good. We also, uh, through that app, push out information. If we have weather delays or something occurs, um, that information along with our CTY is also sent out through this Route Shout 2.0 application. Next slide. Um, and also on the uh, recent buses we have purchased, about 50% of our fleet or a little under, uh, we now have Wi-Fi so that our passengers uh, will be able to do their homework, do whatever they wanna do and search on their phone and utilize our Wi-Fi system. Uh, when you get onto our bus, just hold down your Wi-Fi button and search for think link, think underscore link, uh, load it on there and have it to automatically connect. And every time you hop on your bus, on our bus, it will actually automatically switch over to utilize our Wi-Fi versus your own particular data plan. Next slide. Um, another milestone over the last two years, uh, we have purchased 15 replacement buses. 
235 foot, 31 passenger with three wheelchair positions, eight cutaway, 18 passenger buses with four wheelchair positions. And the reason we are transitioning our buses to four wheelchair versus two, like all the uh, other ones that we have replaced or are going to replace, is because of the demand for that type of service has greatly increased. And with having more availability of wheelchair positions, we no longer have to send two buses to the same street uh, because now we have much more capacity that one pit, one bus can pick up four passengers with ease. And then again, our most recent purchase is the five heavy duty 30 passenger buses for our fixed route service, and they each have two wheelchair positions. Off to the right there, you can see an aerial shot of our current lot in our location. Um, and that is where uh, all of our buses are parked and stored. Um, and as I'll go through a little bit later, uh, one of the things we are also working at is a, um, we have a grant and we started the process to look for either expanding this facility or locating to a new facility uh, because currently we are very tight in our operations. Uh, we're approximately 36 employee parking spots short and our employees or our drivers, when they come and grab their paperwork, they go down and pull their bus out park their car in the area where the bus was, and then they go on to their route. But that is something as we go and we grow, you know, we certainly need to look at something like that to make our operations run smoother and better. Next slide. Again, um, through our route match routing system, uh, they have a system called the route match optimizer. Uh, that is what helps improve the efficiencies, especially, especially on our demand response operations. Um, but we have spent time and energy and funds to send people to train to be better at utilizing that software. Um, and then of course, we have worked closely with RouteMatch to op optimize the system so it works much more efficiently for us. Uh, once we got that system into use, we have probably seen about a 30% increase in vehicle utilization, where we are able to get many more passengers on a vehicle still uh, meet the criteria of what the passenger wants, uh, but run less miles, work less hours, and become more efficient operations so we can service more people with the same amount of equipment. Uh, we also, with our expansion, improved our vehicle maintenance operation. Uh, our, our maintenance group now works from 5 a.m. to 8.30 at night. Uh, we operate from approximately 4 a.m. to 10 o'clock at night, um, but we added a technician to our group of mechanics and um, our service is, is much better. And part of that criteria is because uh, the bulk of the uh, funding for our vehicles are federally funded. So with that federal comes certainly guidelines that not only do we wanna do the required maintenance, but the standards for maintaining a federally funded vehicle uh, far exceed uh, some of that, even what the manufacturer uh, expectations are. So that helps us keep our, via, our vehicles um, you know, fully maintained um, and always running in good order and always safe. Um, of course, we completed an office upgrade because as we go through this transition of expansion, uh, we certainly didn't have enough office space. Uh, so we were able to apply for a grant and uh, get the funding to do some uh, upgrades to our office. One of the big ones was our training room where now we have an upgraded training area uh, where we can continue and improve our training ability uh, with our drivers and our entire workforce. And currently, as I talked earlier about the uh, facility and how tight it is, uh, we do have a facilities feasibility study going on right now, uh, and that was also grant funded, and that we have a hearing coming up sometime in March, and that information is on our website. Uh, that is where we uh, started out looking at about 25 locations in Hartford County. Uh, we have narrowed it down to three, one of them is our existing existing area and, and some land around it. Um, but this will be a hearing to uh, talk about the three locations and then start the pathway to whether we would look at expanding our current facility, if that is feasible, or possibly relocating to another, another area. But that is coming soon. Um, one of the things we're most proud of our for Transit Link has been awarded the Maryland's Outstanding Transit System of the Year by the Transportation Association of Maryland uh, for its dynamic modernization and accessible, accessible technology upgrades. 
And uh, we are quite proud of this that we have received the award in 2014, 2017, 2019, and 2021. And we look forward to doing it many more times. We do a lot of outreach and in community involvement. Uh, one of the things that we have been invited to, uh, to do a presentation of our successful rollout of our route upgrade to BusCon in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, about a year or so ago. And uh, that was because we, again, were one of the few organizations, especially a rural operated smaller transit organization that did a complete overhaul of their fixed route system. And we were seeing that 22% increase. Uh, so we went out to Indiana and, um, you know, at that particular convention, which is nationwide and people are there from every state in the country uh, to talk about and do a presentation on how we did it, what we did and what were some of the challenges and certainly what were some of the successes of that particular uh, change in our organization. Uh, we also did a similar presentation for TAM, the Transportation Association of Maryland. Most recently, we did a presentation to that particular group uh, about a possible progression to CNG powered vehicle from Press National Natural Gas. Uh, we have done a lot of legwork to look at how we can improve and meet the upcoming emissions uh, criteria that is going to be set. There's a lot of discussion about electric that we research, uh, but we also did a lot of work in the CNG uh, to look at that would be the, the right way to fuel our vehicles into the future. Uh, we have work to not only research and get quali quantitative information, we were also uh, very successful at achieving uh, grants to start this project and hopefully within the next 12 to 24 months uh, we can start to see some movement where as we replace vehicles they will be transitioned to CNG power. Um, again we also participate in the uh, TAM which is the Transportation Association of Maryland statewide annual rodeo. Uh, fortunately uh, one of our drivers Dave Hall has won that rodeo and always places in the top three uh, we participate. We participated as a group in the 2019 and 2021 Bel Air Fourth of July parade. Uh, we complete an annual Dump the Pump Day in June. Again, if you watch our website and the information we push out to the public, uh, that is an annual event where uh, people ride free for the day. The only thing we ask is to fill out a survey. Uh, we do something similar in September for the students at Hartford Community College, and Alan will talk about that. Uh, we participate in Project Homeless Connect. And this year we were able at Ripken Stadium to participate in the Military Appreciation Night uh, we, where we brought one of our vehicles. Um, and as people stopped by, we tried to explain our service and what we do. Uh, and that also was a very successful event for us and enjoyable to attend. Uh, partnerships, we continue our partnerships with the town of Aberdeen. Um, you know, there we were able to do the bus shelter. Uh, there's actually five bus shelter locations in Aberdeen, uh, but we did work to the with the town and they actually participated where we supplied the shelter. Uh, they did all of the construction work, the concrete, uh, the permitting and everything else. And all we had to do was get the shelter to the, there and uh, pay for our contractor to erect it. Um, and we continue to work with them because the area in and around that location at the train station, right around where our bus shelters are, will go under a beautification plan. Uh, we have partnered with them to let them use our electricity that we use for electronic signs for low level lighting, but they'll be making that like a park space with some benches, some low level lighting um, and enhance that entire area. Of course, we also did something similar in the middle picture there is the bus shelter located in Bel Air. Uh, that is where we partnered with the town of Bel Air. They actually uh, committed and did the concrete work and everything. And we hired our contractor to put the shelter on. And then of course, over on the right there, that is our ribbon cutting at that newest Edgewood location. Uh, and to our surprise, that particular day, we almost had 50 participants attend the ribbon cutting. Um, and that shows the importance of doing projects like this. And certainly there was a lot of people there from the local area of Edgewood, uh, people from the county, people from the state. And it was a, a, a pleasant surprise to all of us uh, because we probably had 50% more people than we ever thought we would. And then along with that, with the 755 Alliance, 
Uh, we just created a partnership with the adopt the shelter program where they have adopted the new Edgewood shelter location and also the one across the street in front of the Walgreens. Um, and they have committed every other week to help us go in and, um, you know, empty the trash and keep it in good cleanliness um, and, and help those locations maintain their professional uh, image and what they have. Along with that, all the shelters we do have, we actually get professionally power washed every two weeks. Um, and then along with that, they sanitize them. And that was our commitment to our clients during the pandemic that we would do everything in our power, similar to what we do to our fleet of vehicles. Um, every night when our vehicles get back, they are sprayed um, you know, to sanitize them. It dries overnight. Um, and that has been very, very helpful for us through this whole pandemic process. And we will continue with that. And then quarterly, we have an outside company come in and do an additional sanitation. And we also have what's called curious, curious fogging systems, uh, which is a sanit sanitization fogging system uh, that we do approximately 30 of our buses every week. And all of that is to continue to keep our riders safe, not only our riders, but our employees, and to be a good partner in the county. Next slide. Uh, with all that going on, we are also looking at future planning. Uh, currently, we're under a small area plan study where we have a uh, consultant assigned by the MTA to look at the area north of Bel Air. That is the only area in Hartford County that is quite populated that we do not service. So this is a preliminary planning procedure. On March 2nd, we will have another public hearing for that particular situation. Um, but we are considering going up as far as the shop right in Forest Hill, um, up on uh, Route 23 and 24 there, and then also down Route 1 to around where the new Walmart is to expand our service from the mall down to Route 1. So there's nothing definite. Um, it is something that we are looking at. We're looking at multiple ways to do that, which would be part of this discussion. Um, and then even once it does happen, of course, the next step is always to find the funding to make it happen. But that is in our plans. And we certainly understand that as the county grows and Hartford Transit grows, uh, you know, we need to reach out and try and stretch our services as far as we can. Next slide. So for this particular meeting, um, our FY23 requested funding um, and part of this meeting is because under our federal and state guidelines, we are required to publicly review this information and, um, you know, go over what our requests are. So our 22 approved funding sources for the above funding was approximately $6.7 million in operating plus $1.9 million in capital for a total of $8.6 million in 2022, which is approved in its current uh, fiscal year we are in. Our FY23 annual request will be for some additional capital requests and of course replacement equipment. So our request for 23 uh, is approximately 7.6 million in operating funds and 2.5 million in capital for a total of 10.1 million. And again, this will be for multiple replacement vehicles um, it will be for a utility vehicle for our maintenance garage that if they have to go out and service our uh, vehicles on the road, we have an updated equipment for that. Um, and then, of course, it also covers the maintenance for our entire fleet. The Hartford County portion of this funding request, uh, it follows the proper county approvals and guidelines. And without the local portion of the county, it is a requirement for us to be able to get the federal and state funding. Next slide. Um, this is the funding to give you a little idea of what funding is used for. So if you look in the center there where it says fixed route, uh, pretty much that is funded by what's called 5307 funding and our county local fund. So that is a, a federal fund with some state match. And then, of course, it has the local match. And that is actually funds all of our fixed route transportation. On our ADA and demand response side, uh, basically, that is SDAT, which is all state funding and, again, county funding to make that all work. Um, and then part of that portion is we do have, <clears throat> excuse me, some employment um, that we uh, utilize our demand response for. And that, again, is partial funding through that same 5307 grant 
and again, the local uh, county matching funds. So that really supplies for our human, our human service programs, our demand response service, and of course our ADA complementary paratransit service. Next slide. So get in touch. Um, if you ever have any information, you know, certainly again, you could go to our website or we ask you to reach out to our communication team. We have a great group of people in our communication specialist area. Um, and if you have anything that you may need, any questions or whatever, please feel free to call and they will certainly be able to answer your question. If not, they will get back to you with an answer. We also utilize Blackbird Blackboard Connect, and that again is, I talked about it earlier, that CTY system where you fill out the information. Uh, that is as refined as if you, on that form, fill out what particular routes that you would normally ride. You would only get information uh, pertaining to that particular route or if it's something like a weather event that affects the whole system. Again, we do travel training, and uh, that is completed by Alan Dorn, who will be um, talking right after me about his ride share program. Uh, but that is where either individuals or groups, and when we do that in a, in a current, in a typical situation, uh, we like to go out with a group. Uh, Alan uh, works with the group and works with someone with the group to become a trainer for the future for that organization. Um, and that has been very successful. And he may talk a little bit about some of the things that he has done in that particular area. And then again, um, through our organization and our rideshare coordinator, uh, there's multiple connections that you can uh, utilize by using that program. Um, and again, Alan will be addressing them uh, after I completed what I have to, what my portion is. All right, next slide, which I think will be Alan. Yes. <laughs> Lisa, am I unmuted? You're good, Alan. Good to go. Okay. Yes, you're good to go. Yes, you're good to go, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome again, everyone. Uh, my name is Alan Dorn. As Gary mentioned, I'm the rideshare coordinator for the county. And I just basically, I work with our community for folks that are looking to change their commute. They want to get out of their single occupancy vehicle and look at different ways to get out and about. They also do limited outreach or outreach to um, our seniors and folks with disabilities also. So my program is an MDOT MTA funded program. I receive a budget annually. I've been here 10 years. It's $88,066 that I receive annually. That has remained flat. And for the past three years, I've asked for a 15% increase um, just to you know, continue with the scope. Everything has gone up operating the program. So I have been asking for increases, but unfortunately that has not come through. Um, but I use that money to uh, outreach to the um, community. And as you'll see, I'm part of the Baltimore Metropolitan Council, Commuter Choice Maryland, and I'm also part of the Metropolitan um, Maryland Washington Council of Governments region. There are five of us rideshare coordinators in the, um, the Baltimore region. You'll see Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, myself, Baltimore City, Carroll County, and Howard County. And we all work together. Um, we partner with each other also um, to promote ride sharing, which in turn can help improve the environment and then reduce traffic congestion. Some of the services I offer are information about car and van pools, mass transit, which can of course, of course include Harford Transit Link, the MTA commuter bus, and Mark Train. I also um, will work for folks, for instance, earlier today, um, the person was starting a new job in DC. So I worked with them on Mark Train information but also, I also connected them with the Washington Metro um, for information about Metro also. So I do a little bit extra to help folks looking for their commutes. I work with individuals, employers looking to change how they get to and from their jobs. One of the main areas that I do is workforce transportation. I do a lot of outreach with our local businesses, our logistics and distribution centers to promote ride sharing op op options for their associates. And um, I just were overall work to improve transit connectivity. Some of the things that I do um, as rideshare coordinator, May is probably the busy, busiest month, busiest month of the year for me. That's clean commute month. And that of course includes bike to work week. This year, I'm really happy we're going live with bike to work week once again. 
Um, in the past, that had shifted to a virtual presentation. It's now going to be where you actually get to ride your bike to a pit stop here in the county. Always a fun event. It's a great way to promote bicycling in the community. Um, folks are often surprised to find out that we have one of the largest cycling communities. Basically, with Bike to Work Day, we're second in the Baltimore region behind Baltimore City with participate, participants in that Bike to Work. I do Mark Commuter Appreciation Days. This is where I head out early to greet our folks using the Mark train with coffee, um, assorted beverages, and so forth, as well as information in June. In conjunction with transit, Hartford Transit, I do handle Dump the Pump Day. Um, we hand out information, we get surveys back in, and we also coordinate with different um, agencies to help us. Everybody gets on the bus, basically, and we ride and we talk with folks getting information. It's another fun day. Um, Gary mentioned we do the um, Independence Day Parade. This year, I'm in talks with our Edgewood Joppa Town community to um, participate in that. Um, parade. In September, I host a Van Pool Appreciation Day. I also do a car free day um, at Harvard Community College where students and staff at the college can ride for free. Very similar to Dump the Pump Day. Once again, we conduct a survey of college students um, asking for information about our service and how we can possibly improve for them. I also do a lot of community outreach, um, resource fairs, senior expos, transitioning youth, second chance job fair, um, many resource fairs through community okay. services, other organizations, a veterans expo, and any fairs or fast festivals, and it targets a wide range of demographics. I also coordinate closely with Susquehanna Workforce Network and Beacon Staffing to promote workforce transportation. And that is basically what I do as ride share coordinator working in the community. Thank you. Gary, Thank you, I'm Alan. Cool. Yep. Thank you, Alan. Uh, so next will be our public comment section. Next slide, Alan. Uh -huh. um, and again, just a reminder that the session is being recorded. Comments must be relevant to today's presentation and pertain to the topics discussed. Uh, please be prepared to say your name. Um, and reference a slide number if applicable. Uh, start your comments with your name and address, city or town. You'll have two minutes for your comments. There will be no responses to your comments today. However, once again, questions and comments will be categorized and responses will be posted on our website no later than February 24th, 2022. And Gary, I'm looking at the chat. We've had no comments listed yet so far. Okay, and if you want to mention the ones we received, not necessarily a comment, right. but we right. I okay. do apologize. Mm -hmm. um, from Senator um, Cassidy's office, we received um, quite a few questions earlier um, in the day, and we will be addressing those just like we mentioned. Um, all answers will be posted to the website, but we did receive a number of questions from Senator Cassidy's office. Alan, it looks like we have a hand raised. Okay. Can you see it? I I don't see a hand. Um, I'm looking on the participants list, but I don't see a hand. I believe it's Miss Vivian. Vivian Sedney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Did we want to um, yeah, go ahead. So she could ask her question? Can you unmute her, Lisa? It's it's asking me to request the unmute. I requested it. It might be a delay. Um, Vivian, if you can hear me, did you want to write your um, comment? Can you hear me now? Top? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Um, um, I live at five 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 South Atwood Road in Bella, Maryland, and um, I have two questions one is um provide matching services do you match those with medical appointments in other counties um like if somebody um needed to go to Anne Arundel county for a medical appointment does that is it linked up somehow and my second question is, 
um, you probably answer it through the communication team. Um, I noticed on your orange bus that it it goes to um, Office Depot, but it doesn't go up to the post office. So you have to go up the hill to the post office or down the hill to the post office. And um, that's kind of cumbersome, you know, in the rain and um, and everything. And um, I don't understand why you can't go to the post office. You know, it's, um, you know, maybe people, maybe you address it through, um, through ADA paratransit compensating thing, because I would think, I'm not, I, I think that not being able to access a federal building doesn't agree with ADA standards, but I might be wrong. So those were my questions. Ms. Hedney, thank you. You're welcome. I have them written down. Okay. Is there anyone else? On a train that's that, I don't see any chat comments if we had any other questions from anybody if you wanted to ask or make a comment please do and i believe maybe those who may be trying that they if they put their name in the chat box we will unmute them maybe that could be part of the problem or raise the hand Yes, to anyone in there, if you see the little hand on the bottom bar of the screen, if you click that, we'll know you're raising your hand and you want to ask a question. Right. I do see Crystal Parks from Abingdon. Crystal, are you able to open up or did you want to type your chat, your message in chat? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. I couldn't figure out how to make it work. Um, I just wanted to add that I agree with the uh, previous commenter about I happen to be disabled. Um, so places that I really need um, to be able to get to with transit are things like post offices. I, I live in Abingdon near the Target. Um, so Abingdon's post office would be the most convenient to me, but that walk, especially coming back up the hill, um, I just can't do. And that intersection um, near the Walgreens, and I think that's a 7-Eleven, I've almost got hit like probably 20 times in the last two years crossing legally by just trying to get <laughs> across that crosswalk. Um, so it's, it's really a dangerous place. I've actually adapted to going back behind the Wendy's and crossing without a sidewalk just, and then walking further distance to be able to do that. Um, ATMs for different bank locations, govern, government buildings, um, the court systems, the county council, the board of education, public meetings that I cannot participate in because I can't access and the, the, the drop offs are just too far for me or a safety risk at night. Weekends and evenings, um, leisure time, not just work related things. I'd love to be able to go to the 4th of July parades to actually watch you, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I can't get into, into those events um, because they fall on a holiday when the buses don't run. Um, so I, I wanna be more active and I, and I have a lot of people in, in my um, circle that we'd like to be more active and participate fully shopping um, and, and just leisure time things and community events, but we're kind of excluded and our focus really isn't work, um, but that doesn't mean that we're not engaging in work type things Monday through Friday during normal business hours where we're having to engage services and that kind of thing, but we also have needs beyond that. Um, 
And then th another big concern, detention center area. Um, I have a number of families that can't go visit in individuals on the weekend for visitation because they lack public transit. Thank you for the shelters. We need more. Thank you. Um, Ms. Parks, could you um, just refresh where, where you reside? The community? I'm, I'm actually in Abingdon. I'm in the Riverwoods community back behind I Target. Said, mm -hmm. I thought you said that. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that okay. community, especially as well as the sister property at Forest Hill by Chick-fil-A and Coles, um, high number of individuals that are serviced under housing vouchers, um, the, the Maryland State Department of Disabilities, um, housing program, no cars. Um, a, a, you have a lot of market right in those two locations if the bus simply came a little bit closer. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any comments or um, observations they would like to share? Um, indicate in the chat box or if you can raise your hand. Okay, looks like we have no, no additional comments. All right, next slide. I'd like to thank all of you for your participation. Uh, again, if you have any additional questions or whatever, uh, you can um, use the email address on our website and we will accept questions um, into next week. And certainly, as I said earlier, we'll have everything posted um, by February 24th. Uh, but I do want to thank you for your participation and not only from myself, but the entire team at Hartford Transit Link and um, it's connecting you to life opportunities and we appreciate uh, serving the county and helping and assisting uh, the people who ride our fleet and anyone else. So thank you. Right. Oh, thank you. We really do appreciate you all coming on this evening. And I nice seeing some faces that I know I've spoken with. Or, uh, emailed with. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice night and a good weekend. Oh, you Take too. Care. Take care.